घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ओम आईडी आर बिलवेड घनश्याम महाराज द पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन आर अटमोस्ट डियर पूज्य गुरुजी पूज्य भगत जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोटीज जय स्वामी नारायण it's known that out of the 500 nun santo in the time of shriji maharaj whenever or wherever anyone heard of nun santo the first saint they would think of is sadguru muktanand swami afterwards all the other santos would come in mind as a list in the same exact manner out of all the devotees of bhagwan swami narayan when one hears devotees of bhagwan swami narayan the first devotee that comes to mind is bhaktaraj dada khachar dada khachar was and is is an iconic character in the eyes of not only shri ji maharaj but nan santos along with hari bhaktos at that time and as of right now many many santos and hari bhaktos because he was an example he lived a life where he did not own or he did not really think or understand that anything was his he pretty much surrendered everything to bhagwan swami narayan which made him something more than the next devotee we can say that a disciple's character or greatness marks the level and greatness of one's own god or guru you can say what am i talking about if one can see that this disciple or this hari bhagat or this saint is such a great saint or such a great hari bhagat then one can imagine that this can be all due to one's teacher which is obviously bhagwan and his guru on this earth it's kind of like a meter or a test meter one can test and one can see this but today we want to take a look inside the life of dada khachar who was something more and by his charitras we'll be able to understand so without further ado once shri ji marj was seated underneath the neem tree in gadda in dada khachar's darbar meaning his courtyard and all the devotees had gathered there some santos had gathered there to hear bhagwan's uh, divine talks and before sitting down dada khachar folded his hands and said maharaj may you always be pleased upon me maharaj did not say a word at that time and dada khachar sat down in the assembly and the talks continued onwards then time flew by after maharaj's talks and it was midday 12 o'clock in the afternoon and there right then maharaj said dada khachar stand up so with folded hands just like how a servant would stand in front of his king dada khachar stood up and maharaj says you keep telling me that may you may i become pleased upon you may i become pleased upon you well well today i'm ordering you to leave gadda with your family and hand over your entire estate meaning your entire courtyard your property to me at once in front of santos in front of his fellow devotees dada khachar did not say one word and left 
right there and then. Now, think about it. In case any of you didn't know about Dada Khachar's background, he was the king of Gadara, meaning at that time there was that kind of system of ruling and he was the king of that whole village and he had his own property and he pretty much looked over and ruled uh, the people there in that village. He took care of them and pretty much everyone looked up to him in that way. Everyone knew that this was Dada Khachar's Darbar. This was Gadara was Ugadara was the kingdom of Dada Khachar. Everyone knew at that time. Santos knew, devotees knew. There wasn't a question in mind. Now, in an assembly where all the devotees know you, look up to you, because they know that on this in this world, as a status, you're the king of this village and this is your courtyard. All the santos there, the prominent and elite santos, know you as well. And Maharaj himself stands him up and says this one word or one sentence and without any kind of doubts, without any kind of thoughts, Dada Khatri stands up and says and leaves immediately. Imagine how much understanding he must possess. Nonetheless, he was the ruler of that kingdom, yes, of course. But Marad said him and his family. At that time, his wife, Jasuba, along with his small two-year-old boy, had to leave their own courtyard. Now, there will never be any kind of, you can say, examinations like this by Maharaj or even Santos in this time. But definitely, I can say even while I'm talking to all of you, I'm also talking to myself inside that there will never be any kind of examinations like this or any kind of series of tests. But if a son, a true saint, asks us to let go of our nature that he does not like or let go of something, anything that does not please him or even if it pleases him, let go of it. If we can do this, then we can see that we have faith in him, in his words. But if it's not possible, then what faith do we have? It's a very, very true fact. Keeping and remembering Puja Guruji in mind, our Dada Guru tested Puja Guruji as well in his time 40 years ago. When I, there was this small prasang where when Guruji was just young and he had become a saint, Dada Guru ordered Puja Guruji to sleep outside in the rain, outside on this platform concrete platform in the rain without any question without any hesitation without any kind of remarks Puja Guruji at that small young tender age did exactly what his Guru said and afterwards when he was done with this you can say test he did not even react or a act abnormally in front of his Guruji and had did not even have a single thought in his mind proved that Puja Guruji had iconic faith in Dada Guru showing us and giving us an example as well that if Puja Guruji himself commands us or orders us to do some kind of small task not even such a big task like Dada Khachar had been assigned and if we are able to do it we would be able to pass the test, the test of faith, which is the biggest test, you can say, in the spiritual world. Because the foundation of spirituality, the foundation of religion is faith. And if we would be able to pass this test, then we would be able to get the great Satpurusha's Rajipo, his heart's Rajipo, meaning his most inner Rajipo, or his happiness.
But back to the story. The other catcher desired to please Marat, so he immediately stood up and left. And he called for his wife, Jasuba, to the courtyard. As she entered the courtyard, the other catcher explained what Maharaj had said. So Jasuba also wanted to please Maharaj as well. With folded hands said, Ha Maharaj, and started to leave. Before leaving, Jasuba thought to grab some food for her two-year-old son and because it, he was hungry. So she went in the kitchen and started to work up something. And right there and then, Sriji Maharaj came. He said, what are you doing? She explained that my two-year-old son, Maharaj, as you know, is hungry. I'm just preparing a little bit of food. Sriji Maharaj said, did you ask any permission? Or did you just go ahead and start? This is my kitchen. It's not your kitchen anymore. Leave immediately. Without any hesitation again, and without any questions, Jasuba left with her two-year-old son, with Dada Kachur, outside. They started to walk on the outskirts of Gadara. And as they reached the outskirts, Maharaj cried out. He could not see this anymore. Go call Dada Kachur. Go call Dada Kachur. And a couple of Parsids went and called Dada Kachur and the family back. And right there and then, when Maharaj saw Dada Kachur, he became so pleased he immediately hugged him. What does this show? Well, in the Vachnamrut, Maharaj puts into context this very, very same prasang when he names Dada Kachur specially in the Vachnamrut Loya third. Maharaj says that what would a person who has faith in God and his son, coupled with the knowledge of their greatness, not do for the sake of God and his son? For them, he would renounce his family, renounce any fear of public ridicule, which the other Kachur did, renounce a kingdom, which the other Kachur proved, renounce pleasures, which the other Kachur performed, renounce wealth, which the other Kachur proved, renounce his wife, and in case of a woman, she would renounce her husband. Now, in that situation, Maharaj commanded the whole family, but if Maharaj said to Dada Kachar that please kick your family out, Jasuba and your two-year-old son out of this kingdom and you only stay here, Dada Kachar would not hesitate even for a moment. That's how much faith he had in Maharaj. That's why he had attained such a Rajipo of Maharaj. But this is only the starting of his Charitras. Dada Kachar was so broad along with so deep with understanding that even by reading his charitras, we cannot imagine how great of a mukta, how great of an anadi mukta Dada Kachar was. Not only that, but at one time, enemies invaded Gadara. Since it was a kingdom, other kingdoms would come and try to take it over. Things like this would happen in that time as well. So enemies came and tried to invade Gadara. When Maharaj learned and found out about this you know what Maharaj did well before I tell you I also want to tell you that Maharaj performs charitras divine incidences Bhagwan is Bhagwan but he is just showing us in, in his way how he wants his devotees to become so what you know what Maharaj did Maharaj put on armor over his body Maharaj took a shield Maharaj took a sword and was and told everyone that no one worry I will take care of every one of these people do not do anything Maharaj went out inside of the, outside of the courtyard in front of hundreds and hundreds of people who had come to take over Gadara and with a divine glance all of them ran away and this is how Maharaj protected Dada Kachar's Durbar at that time, Dada Kachar did not even know about this. But Maharaj knew about this first. So he did this, he performed this divine charitra to help and protect his Bhagat. Well, you may think that doesn't Maharaj protect us? Yes, 
he does protect us he's always in our you can say he's always in our side he's always watching in our shadows but only one who has such kind of faith can you can really ask for this kind of protection in the vachanamrit kadada last chapter 14th vachanamrit maharaj says that i protect one who has firm faith in me just as a mother protects her child maharaj gives this example just as a mother protects a child i don't know if any of you have seen but when monkeys small baby monkeys are born and the mother monkey wherever she goes the small baby monkey always grabs the mother monkey's neck and pretty much even if the mother monkey jumps from place to place even if she goes anywhere that small baby monkey always holds on to the mother monkey and never lets go never lets go of her ever in any kind of circumstance because that baby knows that this mother will protect me that baby knows that this mother is the only one that would be able to save me in the same exact manner maharaj knows or not maharaj but the devotee of maharaj should know that maharaj will protect me as long as i have faith in him and dada khachar had faith complete faith in maharaj and due to that maharaj performed the charitra of wearing armor of wearing or, or uh, taking a shield and a sword i mean we cannot imagine even such kind of darshan in our mind of maharaj wearing a, a shield uh, or taking a shield and a sword and wearing armor and going out to fight for his bhagat but it happened it was a prasang in the time of 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 maharaj himself 200 years ago in the courtyard of the dada khachar proving that maharaj will do anything for his devotee as long as that devotee has faith inside of him saying that guruji also has the same kind of nature where whoever has such kind of faith in him meaning in his words in his vachan in his each and every action he is always there for that devotee no matter what no matter in any kind of situation and from me saying this to you and you comprehending in your mind and completely believing me that's not what i expect but if you experience for yourself that puja guru ji is completely like this you'd be able to tell that guru ji saves us just like how maharaj saved his devotees why because maharaj lives inside of puja guru ji constantly every second every millisecond and does his work but keeping that in perspective dada khachar's life was not an ordinary life there were so many devotees in that time of maharaj but why did dada khachar's name in the vachanamrut come out the most why did maharaj stay in dada khachar's darbar in his courtyard the most out of all his life why did maharaj himself keep saying dada khachar dada khachar in vachanamrut because he had iconic faith his faith was unbelievable and out of all the things out of all spiritual endeavors maharaj likes faith the most and it's proven in the vachanamrut maharaj looks at one's faith meaning refuge astro these are all forms of faith but maharaj loves this you can say element the most out of a devotee moving on at one time there were many many maid servants that dada khachur kept in his courtyard for doing miscellaneous tasks and at one time one of them ran away with 2400 rupees 
Now, she got to the outskirts of Gadara, but she lost her way. So, wherever she looked, she saw Gadara, meaning she just saw the village. Wherever she looked, she, she could not, wherever she, she glanced, she just saw the village. Meaning she did not know what to do. So, she returned back to Gadara, to the courtyard and returned the money. Maharaj found out about this and told Dada Khachar, Dada Khachar, do you know what one of your maids has done? Dada Khachar came, folded his hands, no Maharaj, I, I don't know. She stole 2400 rupees of your property and she was trying to run away, but she could not find her way, so she came back and returned the money. So I want you to immediately chop her head off. Maharaj said this to Dada Khachar. Dada Khachar was baffled by hearing this. He says, Maharaj, I cannot do such a thing. Even if she did steal 2,400 rupees, she changed her name all day. How could I do this? And also, Maharaj, these 2,400 rupees, they don't belong to me, as I have already proclaimed to you. This is all your property. So why should I chop off her head? This is what Dada Khachar said. Maharaj said, How could you keep such a person like this in your courtyard? Do as I say. Dada Khachar again pleaded to Maharaj that she worships you. She has faith in you. She made a mistake by stealing this 2400 rupees. But Maharaj, she has faith in you and she says your name. How can I do this to such a person. Look at how much maima Dada Khachar had. For even a person that stole literally his money, yet he did not keep any kind of, you can say, anim anim uh, a bad thought towards such a person. You can say he, he, had, he, he was a householder, but he, complete, he had complete qualities of a sadhu. He did not say anything. He said, she says your name, she worships you. I cannot do such a task. And after the second time that Maharaj pleaded, and again the Adhakacha replied in the same manner, Maharaj stood up and hugged the Adhakacha for such kind of remarkable sadhuta, saintliness. This was the Adhakacha. He was not an ordinary devotee. These charitras prove it. And we can also see that he also carried Maharaj's principles throughout his life. According to the Vachnavarth, Vartha 11 chapter, Maharaj says, Maharaj is teaching us, my nature is such that I feel extremely afraid of harming any of the following people. First, God. Second, a devotee of God. Third, a Brahman. And fourth, a poor person. I feel very, very afraid. Other than these four, I am not afraid at all. This is because even if one were to harm any anyone else, one's body would be destroyed. Or one, one's body would be destroyed. The jeev would not be destroyed. However, if a person harms one of these four, then one's jeev would be destroyed. Maharaj is talking about the consequence of harming a devotee of, or, or harming Bhagwan or a devotee of Bhag, uh, God or a Brahman or even a poor person. But Dada Khachra had such kind of awareness that I cannot do such a thing. This was his awareness, this was his logic that he carried Maharaj's principles throughout his life, wherever and where, whenever he went. A small charitra that I'm reminded of that I read was even at one time the Adhakachar was a little far from the courtyard and he was getting his, you can say, haircut in that time and Maharaj himself yelled out, Dada, Dada, where are you? Right at that time, halfway through his haircut, the Adhakachar ran to where Maharaj was 
and folded his two hands and said, How Maharaj? What what do you need? Maharaj inquired, What are you what are you doing? Dada Kachur said, Maharaj, I was just getting my hair cut and you called for me. So I came immediately. Maharaj became pleased just by this small task. Why? Because Dada Kachur did not keep anything primary besides Maharaj himself. A small mere haircut or his property or his kingdom or his family or his small child or anyone or anything else he kept only Maharaj primary due to that factor Maharaj became pleased, pleased with even such a small task of getting halfway up through I mean if we think about it and if we look at it in a in a context of you know in this time people would think what's the big deal of a person getting up halfway from a haircut and going to Maharaj or going to this God and saying what do you need but it is it that's only a very very you can say a very surface level vision the deeper vision is that he would do anything at any time for Maharaj and he kept Maharaj primary that was his biggest you can say quality so Dada Kachur's Jeevan, his life is iconic and still lives on. Even right now, 200 years later, we still sing his qualities. We still remember his charitras, his, his great infamous... And that was the important thing. Even as of right now, if someone would read these charitras in the outside world and pretty much calculate that this was just an ordinary devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, in the eyes of Sri Jimaras, he was extraordinary due to his faith, due to his qualities of surrendering each and everything to Maharaj himself. We pray that we receive such kind of qualities in our mind, in our soul so that we can also please Maharaj himself there. Lastly, as a side note, Winter Workshop is coming very close, December 30, 31, January 1st. The registration is open at theswaminarayan.org. Please do whoever is coming to Loyadam NG for Winter Workshop register. Uh, it would be fast, it would be convenient if you register as soon as possible so then all the accommodations can be made. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminari. Shri Patim Shri Dalam Sarvadevishwaram Bhakti Dalmatmajam Vasudeva Mare Madhavam Kesavam Gamdam Karanam Sri Swaminarayanam Nilkantam Bhaje Shri Gansham Marajani Varnivesharamani adarsanam Mandahasarujirananam Pujam Pujitam suranaro tamayir muda 
धर्मनंदनम हम विचिंत धर्मनंदनम हम विचिंत श्री घनश्याम महाराज नी जय ओ माटी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड अवर बिलवड घनश्याम महाराज एंड पाथ में कटू ऑल लिब्रेशन पूज्य भद्द गुरु जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू इज जय स्वामी नारायण टुडे इन 150 Chapter of Bhakta Chintamani Sadhguru Nishkudanan Swami described many other incidents But today something is different Why? Because we have many times listened That one devotee his, uh, He become uh, older and older by age And finally he is point of death is near and Bhagwan himself came to him and Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself took that person into his Aksardam. Many many incidents we have listened such kind of but today even beyond our comprehension first when we listen such kind of incident nobody can even accept that this is a truth why because can you believe that even an animal can go to Aksardham directly even Bhagwan Swaminar himself come to take a soul of an animal yes this is true because Bhagwan Swaminar is a supreme God what he can do other cannot do it that's why Sadhguru Nishkunanan Swami write down here one unique incident in 150 chapter Kahu desa ka namama ek ito lo gama bhakta bhala kan bhi kude jano ji ji bai nama there was a small village by the name of Itola near Vadodara. The region surrounding the Vadodara district was, uh, is known as a Kanam. In this village of Itola, there were many devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. But there was a senior devotee whose name was Jijibai. He was very senior duty in the village. He many times himself go uh, himself went to Vadodara and there they requested and prayed to Santo, please come to my village and uh, deliver your sermons so that all can have benefit. In this way, many times he invited Santo in the village and he spread satsang through uh, throughout the village. And he even changed many, many lives. Meaning he had changed many persons from bad to a good satsangi. Even when Santo was not in his village, Jiji by himself teach satsang's perspective to others. And that's why Bapu Bhai was a, uh, Jiji Bhai was a very senior devotee among all the other devotees. Now, many years passed and finally the point of his death is come. And that's why, for that, as Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself declared that I am definitely will come at the time of death of my duties and that's why Bhagwan Swaminarayan came in the village of Itola Bhagwan Swaminarayan did not come alone he came with many santos and devotees all those santos and devotees they were also divine Bhagwan Swaminarayan divinely came there but Bhagwan selected time of midnight 
So at midnight, in the village of Itola, Bhagwan Swaminarayan, along with many devotees and santo, divinely appear over there, and they proceed towards the home of Jijibai. But in the way, they found a home of another devotee whose name was Bapubai. This Bapubai, he was also very staunch devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And that's why uh, Bhagwan Swaminarayan divinely appear in front of his uh, home. Uh, as Bhagwan Swaminarayan selected a chariot as his vehicle, he stop and park his chariot in, fr uh, in front of Bapubai's home. Maharaj himself knocked the door of Bapubai and Bapubai opened the door. He welcomed Maharaj. Oh Maharaj, you are at midnight and with all these santos and devotees. Then Bapubai first think in his mind whether I am seeing a dream or is it reality. Then Maharaj, Lee, uh, Maharaj omnisciently know all this. Thought, about, uh, thought in the mind of Bapubai. So Maharaj himself said, Bapubai, this is not a dream. This is reality. I divinely came here. Then Bapubai welcomed Maharaj inside the home and he said, Maharaj, please stay forever here in my home. Then Maharaj said, No, Bapubai, I am not coming here to stay forever in your home, but I am coming to take a soul of Jijiba into my Aksardam. Then Bapubai said, Maharaj, that's very, very, very wrong things if you will do it. Maharaj said, Why? Then Bapubai ex explained all the things. Then Maharaj, here in our village, Jijiba was a very staunch and very senior devotee among all of uh, all our group of devotees. And he many times invited Santo from the nearest city, Vadodara. Many times he even regularly narrated your divine incident to us. And many times he himself explained to all the divinity and all the principles and all commandments and everything to us related to you. So if you took Jijiba into your Aksardam, then who will take care of our satsang? He is our leader in our uh, in satsang. So without him, without Jijibai, how can we manage our satsang? How can we manage our daily satsang routines? So we humble request you that if you keep uh, Jijibai here, for us, then it's very good for us. Then Maharaj, after listening humble prayer of Bapu Bhai, Maharaj said, it's okay, don't worry about it. I change my decision. I'll not take Bapu Bhai in Aksadam right now, but after some years. But as I myself and these all these santos and devotees came here, so we definitely will come with the uh, one soul. And for that, I selected this bullock of Jijibai. I'll take the soul of this bullock into my Aksardam. Then Babu Bai got a surprise. Maharaj, Jijibai was your devotee, but this Bulak is not your devotee. He never tried to chant your name, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan. Never he listened discourses related to you. And he cannot be able to walk towards your mandir or he cannot be able to understand who you are. Then Maharaj said, that doesn't matter. But once this bullock, uh, Jijibai used this bullock to pull a cart full of groceries for the santo. And that's why in this way, this bullock came in use 
for a santo that's why because of his uh, because of these much merits of using as a pulling uh, uh, using as a as using to pull the cart only it has this much merit and that's why because of its these merits i uh, even the bullock is eligible to come into my aksardham and that's why i will took it soul to my aksardham finally this was the that was the time of midnight so after explaining this to bapu bhai maharaj himself along with all those divine santo and devotees returned to his aksardham but this time one another person and that that was the soul of this bullock after experiencing this divinity bapu bhai himself at midnight went to jiji bhai's home he knocked the door jiji bhai opened the door he asked why are you coming at midnight is there any emergency or urgency then bapu bhai said no maharaj himself come to my home divinely with many santos and devotees he actually came to take you into his aksardham but i requested him not to uh i requested maharaj that you are very necessary person here in our village for satsang that's why maharaj said it's okay i'll come after some years again to take jiji bhai and instead uh, and if you believe this incident as true then we have a proof for that instead of you maharaj took the soul of your bullock into aksardham and for that let we go to the bullock to check it both jiji bhai and bapu bhai they went near the bullock they turn on the light and they found the dead body of the bullock so after this incident jiji bhai and bapu bhai both experienced divinity but in the early morning they call all the devotees of the village and they explain what was happen at midnight this is what the unique incident because many times we have listened that some devotees some female devotees some child devotees they are uh, their death is near and maharaj himself come along with santos i or many times maharaj alone came there and maharaj took all those souls into his aksardham but this time bhagwan took a soul of an animal soul of a bullock to his aksardham the second incident written in the same 150 chapter there was the another village by the name of mangrur there was many devotees also lived there in the village there was a devotee whose name was bechar bhakt he was very poor and he work in a farm but because uh, but instead of being very busy in farming he mostly passed and used his time to chanting bhagwan's name and worshiping him so definitely he will not earn too much as this is a devotee uh, in, even though he was very poor still he remained very happy and that is why the other who were very health uh, very wealthy in the village that uh, they have natural jealousy with bachelor bhakt somehow contact with the government and that's why they complain against bachelor bhakt and the government officials they came there to bachelor bhakt and they gave a letter of uh, arresting 
order from the court without any fault Bajar Bhak said it's okay everything is done by my Maharaj nobody can do anything to me and in this way Bajar Bhak is ready to go with the officers Bajar Bhak went there and without any fault without any question or without anything Bajar Bhak was sent into the prison and the officers command him if you pay here some big amount of money and after that we will relieve you Bajar Bhakt he was very poor he no any uh, relatives or no any friends who can give him too much money nobody was there Bajar Bhakt has the only friend only relatives and that is Bhagwan Swami Narayan so he said it's okay I am very fine here in the prison there he was chanting and singing bhajans and kirtans in a prison while remembering Bhagwan Swami Narayan's divine form the officers didn't give even uh, didn't give even the food and water to this Bachar Bhakt for two days so Bachar Bhakt had to pass two days without food and water and finally he prayed to Maharaj Maharaj I have no any relatives I have no any friends nothing for my you are my everything and in this way just Bajar Bhakta praying to Maharaj and in the same time Maharaj divinely came there and as Maharaj divinely came so divine light surrounding Maharaj's divine form and that's why all the security guards all the officers government officers all they become surprised and they all have some fear of death that some divine person came here that's why they all together they sat in the corner and Maharaj relieved this uh, Bachar Bhakt from the prison and he himself uh, Bachar Bhakt followed the Maharaj and Maharaj uh, took him to another state where the uh, government and government officers all were uh, very genuine and very humble there Maharaj sat him with uh, his family and his uh, jobs and business and everything in this way Maharaj protected this Bachar Bhakt who was very poor now the another incident happened in the another village of the same region of Kanam there was a village of Karali there were many many devotees lived in this village and many times Maharaj himself gave many kinds of uh, miracles to all of those duties many times Maharaj came there in this same village to took many duties to him uh, into his Aksarda many times Maharaj came there divinely with a chariot many times Maharaj came there with a divine planes in this way Maharaj many times came there with divine vehicles so there were many Nishkudan Goswami said millions of such divine incident happen in the village but here he described the one incident there was a devotee by the name of Nana Bai in the village and because of some uh, because of yeah, because he had some kind of disease and because of this disease he fell ill and he couldn't he could not take water or food all the wall with uh, all the well visitors and whoever came to meet him to see him all decided in their mind that now one or two days remain for Nana Bai and finally after two days as he had not taken food or water so and his disease increased 
in his party so finally he died so somebody has checked his breath his pulse and they decided he's gone so all his relatives his family members they decided to uh, as early as, as soon as possible they try to perform the final ritual that is the cremation uh, the cremation uh, ritual and for that they call all the villagers all the relatives and they finally tied the body of this nana bai and they proceed towards the cremation ground but as they just walked very few steps towards cremation ground they uh, they got a divine darshan of bhagwan swami and along with many santos and devotees and as bhagwan divinely came there so divine light spread all over the village so all the devotees and some non devotees they all got darshan of bhagwan swami nar maharaj told them according to my declaration i am here to took this nana bai to my home uh, my divine abode aksardham but now i change my decision i want to keep nana bai here in this earth i'll come back after some months after some years to take him into aksardham but not now so in this way maharaj put his hand and on nana bai's forehead and nana bai just as somebody wake up from the sleep he wake up and maharaj himself gave command to nana bai now from today you try to eat and drink you can eat and drink and you remain healthy throughout your remaining life in this way bhagwan swami narayan himself protected the another devotee from the disease and even gave his darshan to all the villagers all devotees and non devotees now the another incident written by nishkuran swami that the another devotee by the name of jetha jetho uh, he was a uh, young boy and because of some disease and because of as his death his sir uh, his death is near so bhagwan swami and himself came to his village and because of the uh, disease uh jetho cannot speak anything he just laying on his bed like motionless like a dead body but his eyes were open and even he can his breath and pulse and everything is normal still only he cannot speak a word then all the villagers uh, the uh, valvisers they all suggest his father that your son has no any kind of disease but the ghost or the king of the ghost enter into the body of this jetya but his father he said no i am a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan i do not believe in such kind of talks and although villagers and valvisers they suggest his father to took him to the another uh bua meaning a uh, person who performing a uh, black magic uh, and some tantric some mantra and everything so jetha's father he said no i am a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and if my maharaj desire and desire to give a life to my son then he will give life and if he want to took him into his aksardham then he is the supreme lord he can do it and finally uh 
all uh, this conversation between Jetha's father and the uh, other relatives and valvisors proceed in, uh, at the same time in another home there was uh, another female devotee in the village and Bhagwan Swamina divinely appear in, in her home and Bhagwan told her that uh, go to Jetha's home and inform her uh, inform his father that I came to took him into my Aksardam but not now and for that for this incident for my appearance for the proof of my appearance uh, please take this kumkum this is divine and Bhagwan Swamina himself gave her that female devotee to divine kanku and order that please put a chanlo from uh, uh, of this kanku on the forehead of jetha and say jai swaminarayan so immediately jetho uh, jetha bhakt he become healthy and he relieved from all kinds of disease and everything that female devotee she went to Jet, uh, jetha's home and there he met his father and he explained what was happened what Maharaj commanded her and everything and she put a uh, chandlo on forehead of Jetha's uh, Jetha Bhakt and Jetha Bhakt came uh, even immediately when he listened Jai Swami and then he immediately wake up and he can uh, speak Jai Swami and, and all other things now the last incident written in the 150 chapter there was another uh, there was the another village by the name of Ranu and there uh, one sannyasi lived there in a small mandir his name was Prabhatkar he was not a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan but as many times Santo came Santo passed by the village and many times Santo came into the village and at the time Santo lived there with this sannyasi Prabhatgar and as he came into contact of Bhagwan Swaminar and Santo so he listened many talks many divinity of Bhagwan Swaminar and by listening the greatness and glory of Bhagwan Swaminar as well as he himself observed the system and methods of Santo. Their five religious vows, Panchavartman, and their saintliness. He was very impressed of our Swami and Sampraday, and finally he decided to give up his own faith, and he accepted the refuge of Bhagwan Swami He remained renunciant. He didn't become a son of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, nor he came into contact of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, but by his heart he accepted refuge of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And finally, as he was very famous in the region, so when his time of death is near, Bhagwan Swami Narayan came there. All the many political leaders, many great businessmen, many uh, even the king was also present there at that time Maharaj divinely came there he put a garland in, into the neck of Prabhatkar and also gave him a flower bunch of flower only Prabhatkar can have a darshan of Maharaj but no one else, no one else but all have a darshan of this garland of flower and our rose bunches. Then all asked to Prabhatgar, then Prabhatgar he said Bhagwan Swami and himself come to here uh, and he himself come here to took me into his Aksardam and by saying Jai Swami and to all he lived he left his body and Prabhatgar along with Maharaj, he reached into Aksardam. This is what divine incident happened in the region of Kanam and described by Sadhguru Nishkunan and Swami. He concluded here the 150 chapter of Bhakta Chintamani. 
श्री घनश्याम महाराज नी जय श्रीपतिम श्रीधरम सर्वेश्वर भक्तिधर मतमज वासुदेव हरे माधव केशव कामद कारण स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम भजे श्री घनश्याम महाराज नी जय